Hi everyone, it's Nadia from Yarn Utopia. Today we're making this super fun and easy volcano bag. How exciting is this? <laughs> It's so silly, but it was a lot of fun to make. It's a really easy project, and I'll get into the supplies we need, and then I'll get into making this bag. So I'm using Red Heart Super Saver yarns today. Uh, this is just a 10-ply size 4 worsted weight medium yarn. You're not going to need a whole lot, actually, uh, for my main color, which is this color in mushroom I'm using for the main part of my bag and that one um, I used about a half a skein as you can see here I don't have much left of that so these are 364 yards of yarn uh, probably, I don't know, maybe a little less than half of the skein I used. Also for the red, I just used scraps of that. You're not going to need a whole lot. We're making this bag that cinches at the top. When you uncinch it, it actually looks like a paint bucket. But when you cinch it closed, it looks like a volcano and you can get really fun and exciting with it. You know, you can use this bag for a uh, little satchel, a little purse, a little uh, wrist clutch kind of thing. You can um, use it as a gift bag or storing things inside of it. Um, it's just a fun and easy bag. You can put your phone in there or a tablet in there. It's kind of a, a larger bag. I should get out my measuring tape here. This one measures almost 10 inches wide and 11 inches tall. Okay, so that's like a 28 centimeters tall and like 24 centimeters wide. So that's how big this bag is. You can make it as big as or small as you want it. Um, this is a repeat pattern, so we make this whole part um, just a repeat of single crocheting, and then this top part is a different color, so I show you how to change color. And then we make these lava drips all the way down and around this piece, and then we make a cute little handle um, to hang on your wrist, so it's really nice. So those are, um, that's the yarn we're going to use. You can use any yarn for this. You can use even a bulky yarn or a worsted weight yarn, a double knitting yarn, it does not matter. You can use any type of yarn you want. You're going to need an H size hook, which is five millimeters. This specific hook that I'm using today is actually an ergonomic, handcrafted, hand carved, uh, wood handled um, crochet hook. Actually, I got this at the Etsy shop. Would be fancy. This hook is fixed in there. These are really nice to use, especially if you have arthritis uh, or uh, if you're just really hard to grip a small, tiny uh, hook here. So it's really nice to grip and it's really comfortable to use in crochet. So I'll put the link to the Etsy shop where you can buy these hooks. It is called Would Be Fancy on Etsy and I'll put that link to the shop on uh, in the description of this video and also in my written pattern on my website at yarnutopia.com in the materials section. So you can click that and find a hook like this if you want to get like me. Also you're going to need a scissor and a yarn needle and I'm using a stitch marker. I'm just using a different color piece of yarn to mark my stitches but you can use an, a legit stitch marker if you have one. Um, those are the supplies you're going to need for this project for sewing in ends and sewing things down and cutting yarn and marking stitches, all that good stuff. So those are all the supplies we need. Now before we begin, there are links in the description of this video. So there is that link to the written pattern for this. It is so simple. And uh, that's on yarnutopia.com. There's also links to my Facebook and Instagram, so make sure you follow me on Facebook and Instagram, like my pages, follow my pages, and share your photos. If you make this volcano bag or if you make it into something else, let me know what you make, let me know what's inside your bag, and share a photo, hashtag yarnutopia, so I can see your fabulous work. And uh, you can also, if you're using Red Heart Yarns, hashtag Red Heart Yarns, so that, you know, Red Heart can see your photos as well. So those are all the information you need. Uh, if you have any other other questions you can leave a comment to this video or um, you know contact me through Facebook I have to say one more thing a big huge thank you to my dad what as much for taking the time to make this video with us he is our videographer editor and photographer for all of our videos so make sure you hit that subscribe button here on YouTube so you can get that update on when he posts our next video so now let's get started and make this fabulous volcano bag Let's start out with a slip knot. So put your short end over your long end and then fold this down and then pull your long end through there and pull tight. There's your slip knot. You can insert your hook and we can begin. So let's start out by chaining 35. So yarn over and pull through one, two, three, 
yarn over and pull through, two, yarn over, pull through, three, I won't make you watch me do all 35 chains, so just chain 35 and then I'll meet you up uh, for the next step. Alright, so I just chained 35, so this is what it should look like right now, okay? And now what we're going to do is single crochet in the second chain from the hook and across. So the loop on the hook doesn't count as a chain, so count one and two right in this chain here. What I personally like to do is turn the chain toward me, and you can see these back ridges here. Okay, I'm going to work in those back ridges, so we are going to, because we're going to actually come back around and work on the opposite end of our foundation chain, so it's much easier to work in the back ridges to start out with. So go into the second chain from the hook, and then yarn over and pull through, and then yarn over and pull through the two loops on your hook. Okay, that's a single crochet. So now we're just going to put one single crochet into each chain across until we get to the very last chain. So when I have one chain left, I will meet you up and we'll uh, go on to the next step. We just have to put three single crochets in the last chain. So I'll meet you up and we'll do that and we'll go on to the next step together. All right, so when you have one chain left, we're actually going to put three single crochets in there. So make three, so there's one, and go back in for another one, and then go back in for a third one. Okay, just like that. And now we're going to flip this around, so you can see I just turned this over, and now we're going to work on along this opposite end of this foundation chain, and we're going to put one single crochet in each stitch until the very end, which we're actually gonna put two in. So you can see here we put three in this one right here. Okay, so we don't have to work anything in this stitch right here. We're gonna go into this next one right here, go in, I'm going to work over the top of my straggler as well, the loose end here, to hide that so I don't have to sew it in later. I'm going to yarn over and pull through, and then yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay? And then now these look like stitches. They don't actually look like chains. So I'm going to go into the next one, yarn over and pull through, and then yarn over and pull through two. Okay, this next one here, go in, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through two. Okay. And we're just single crocheting until there's one left, one stitch left. I'll meet you up when I get to that stitch. I'll show you exactly what to do in there, and then we can finally go on to round two. All right, I just have these two stitches left. When you have one stitch left here, we are going to put two single crochets in there so that there is a total of three single crochets. So one and two. Okay, and you can see here this first one right here is already in that stitch, so we have three now, one, two, and three, all in that same stitch. And when you look at the opposite end here, there are three single crochets in there on the opposite end, okay? So now what we're going to do, I'm going to actually place a stitch marker to mark where the beginning of my rounds are. Uh, if you want to have, if you have a legit stitch marker, you can mark the beginning of your round. I'm just going to put a different color yarn in here. And now what we're going to do is in instead of working through both loops, like we usually do in crochet, we go under both loops like that normally, I'm actually going to work this whole piece in the back loops only. Okay, so this is the front loop right here, and this is the back loop. So back loop, back loop. I'm going to just put one single crochet in each stitch around for rounds 2 through 30. Okay, so 30 rounds total. I'm going to just put one single crochet in each stitch. Now you can do more than 30 rows or 30 rounds if you want to. You can see here I'm working in the back loops only and that creates a nice little ridge there. It looks really cool. So I'm going to do rounds 2 through 30 off camera just putting one single crochet in each stitch um, just working in continuous rounds so when you get back to the beginning here 
we're just going to move our stitch marker up and you can mark the beginning of your round. Uh, if you, you know, know where to start and stop your rounds, you don't really need a stitch marker, but I'm going to use one if you're, especially if you're a beginner, it's easy to use a stitch marker to mark where your beginning of your round is and that's really nice to use uh, as a marking guide. Uh, but I'm just going to do rounds 2 through 30, just putting one single crochet in each stitch around and this will become uh, much longer. Like I said though, you can do more than 30 rounds if you want to make it a taller um, bag, but I'm just going to do until round 30. Once I finish round 30, I'll show you how to change color and we'll do a few more rounds and go on to the next step together. All right, when you finish round 30, welcome back. This is what it should look like here. So we have just a little bag here. So now I want to change color at this point. If you want to make this longer, you can go on to making more rounds of this, just working in continuous rounds uh, and make as many rounds as you want to make your bag taller. But I am going to change color at this point. So to change color, what we're going to do is go into this next stitch, okay, still working in the back loops only. Then yarn over with the same color, okay, pull through. So now we have two loops on the hook, but I'm going to drop this color and I'm going to pick up my other color, which is red, okay, for the lava. <laughs> and we're going to hook that on the hook, okay, and then pull that through both of those loops to finish off that stitch. And now we are on with a new color. Okay, so I'm going to drop that straggler and drop my old color. And now we're going to do rounds 31 through 34, just doing the same concept of working one single crochet in each stitch around, working in the back loops only. Okay, just like this. Now it is imperative to work in the back loops only, especially for this part, because we are going to come back and work in the stitches uh, in the free front loops uh, on this second row of this, or this first row here. After I get around here, we're going to work in the back loops only for the rest of this pattern, and then uh, when we want to make the lava dripping down, we are going to be working in the free front loops. So I'll show you how to do that, but I'm just going to do rounds 31 through 34 off camera, just doing one single crochet in each stitch around. I'm also here, I'm going to pause here for a second because we are going to cut our old color, okay, and tie these two colors in a knot. That's where we changed color at the beginning of this round, okay, and then we're just going to sew those in later. So now we can drop our old color there and continue now working one single crochet in each stitch around for rounds 31, 32, 33, and 34. Once I finish round 34, we can fasten off and then make the dripping lava part. All right, when you finish round 34, I guess you can make this as tall as you want as well, but um, I'm just gonna have these, uh, this little like inch or so um, just be the red part. And then now we have to make the drips coming down here. So we're gonna fasten this part off. So slip stitch into the next stitch. So go under both loops now, then yarn over and pull through and pull through. Okay, and then yarn over and pull through to chain one, cut your yarn, and then pull that all the way through and pull tight, and that fastens that off. I'm going to grab my yarn needle right away and sew in some ends here. So I'm going to sew in this end that we just cut, just yarn the needle with this um, straggler here. Oopsie. Need a, maybe a bigger needle. There we go. Okay, so yarn your needle and then go on the inside of the bag and go underneath some of these stitches. Okay, and then stretch it out, cut any extra, and then do the same thing for these two. We want to sew in this one with its corresponding color. So this is the mushroom color. So I'm going to sew that in underneath these stitches of this color and then the red one I'm going to sew in underneath the red color. Okay. So 
So that's how I sew in my ends. Um, I get that question quite a bit actually. How do you sew in your ends? You can go back and forth. You can go just straight through. It's not going to unravel or anything so you have nothing to worry about. Um, but just make sure when you cut your yarn you want to make sure you stretch it all out to hide those completely in there. Okay, so it's all stretched out, looks good. So now we want to make those drips. So we are going to grab the red yarn, grab your hook, and we're gonna start in a stitch on round 31. Okay, so anywhere you wanna start. Uh, I guess we can start right here, the very last stitch of this round. So you can see right here is the last stitch that we made until we went on to round 32. We're gonna hook on the red yarn here and pull it through. We're, we're working in those front loops that are free now. Okay, so these front loops. All right, so I pulled that through that front loop there and then I'm going to chain one to make sure it's completely attached. So yarn over and pull through just like that. Then what we're going to do is Let's see here, slip stitch into the next two stitches. So go from underneath here, okay? Actually, you want the yarn to be on this side of your yarn, or of your hook here. So go underneath this one, and then yarn over and pull that through, just like that. Okay, so that's the next one, and the next one here. Go underneath there, and then you just yarn over and pull that through, okay? So you want the yarn to be on this side of your hook and you're working on it like this. Now on this next one here, so we slip stitched into these, um, these first three stitches. We attached our yarn to this one and then we slip stitched into these next two. So now what we're going to do is chain 22. So yarn over and pull through one. Here's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, and twenty-two. So that is how long this drip is going to be. Let me turn this over so you can see. This is where that drip is going to go down and that's where it's going to lie, okay? So where we're going to what we're going to do now is work up this chain back to this round here. So we're going to in the second chain from the hook, we are going to slip stitch. So the loop on the hook doesn't count as a chain, so count 1 and 2 right in that chain there. And what I personally like to do is turn the chain toward me and work in those back ridges. Okay, you can work in any loop really, but in the second chain, go in, then yarn over and pull through and pull through, and that's a slip stitch, okay? Then what we're going to do is single crochet in the next chain, so go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through two. You can kind of make these stitches quite random actually, so now I'm going to half double crochet in the next two chains here so yarn over go into this next chain yarn over and pull through and then yarn over and pull through all three loops okay and a half double crochet in the next one so again you can randomize these um, stitches uh, single crochet half double crochet and double crochets all the way along this chain however you want to. So now in this next chain I'm going to double crochet. So yarn over, go into the next chain, then yarn over, and then pull it through, then yarn over and pull through two loops, and then yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, that's a double crochet. Then we're going to half double crochet in the next, so yarn over, go into the next, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Then I'm going to single crochet in the next two, so go into this next one, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and the next one, single crochet. Then in the next two, we are going to half double crochet in each one of those. So one and two, and now 
In the next five chains, I am going to double crochet. You can see here, the middle of my ball has a knot in it for new yarn changing. That sometimes happens with new with skeins of yarn. But we're just going to double crochet into five stitches. So that's one. Here's two three, four, and five. Okay, so you can kind of see that it is making a random looking drip type of thing here. Okay, we have a few chains left to work with. We are going to half double crochet in the next two. one and two then we are going to single crochet in two of them one and two and then we're going to half double crochet in the last two so one and two then we're going to slip stitch into the next 10 stitches on round 31 here. So you can see this next one here. You want to make sure this yarn is on this side of your hook. Okay, we're going to go underneath this next uh, stitch in the front loop and then yarn over and pull through and through. Okay, now this drip is loose right here. When we come back around, when we fasten off, we're going to fasten off with a long tail and we're going to sew this down to the bag so it stays on, on like that. Okay, so we're going to slip stitch in the next 10. So that was one. Go into this next one here. Yarn over, pull through. That's two. Next one. Three. Here's four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, and now we're going to make the next drip. So we're going to turn this bag around here. So the next drip we are going to chain ten. So it's going to be a shorter drip here. Yarn over, pull through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then we are going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So remember, the loop on the hook doesn't count as a chain. So count one and two in that second chain. Go in, yarn over, pull through. Yarn over and pull through two loops. Then we're going to half double crochet in the next, so yarn over, go into the next chain here, yarn over and pull through, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. Now we're going to double crochet into the next four chains, so yarn over, go into this next chain here, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, and yarn over and pull through two loops. So that's one, next chain is two, this next one is three, and the next one is four. Double crochets in a row. Then we are going to half double crochet in the next three. So yarn over in the rest of these chains here, we're going to half double crochet. So that's one. Next one is two, and this last one here is three. Okay, so we have a shorter drip here, and now we're going to work on round 31 here of our bag. We're going to slip stitch into the next five stitches. So go into this next one, yarn over, whoopsie, I lost my yarn here. Go in, yarn over, pull through and through. That's one. Next one. Yarn over, pull through and through, that's two. Yarn over, pull through and through, that's three. Four and five. 
Okay, so you can see this drip there. We're gonna, like I said, come back around and sew this down to the bag. For the next drip, we are going to chain 18. So yarn over, pull through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Get more yarn here. <laughs> 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. And then we're going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook. I'm going to go a little bit faster with these stitches because these are um, the same stitches. Single crochets, half double crochets, and double crochets. I'm just going to tell you how many you're going to need in each stitch. So in this next one, in the second chain from the hook, here we're going to put a single crochet. Then we're going to half double crochet in the next four chains. So yarn over for a half double crochet. This is one, next is two, here's three, and four. Then we're going to double crochet in the next two. So yarn over, go into the next here, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So that's one, next one is two. Then we have to, let's see here, double crochet, single crochet in the next two. So we're taking a leap down here in height, going in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. So in the next two, we're putting a single crochet, just like that. And see that drip is going to have a more of a defined curve there. Then we're going to half double crochet in the next two. I keep wanting to say two chains. <laughs> two chains. <laughs> there we go. Two chains there. Half double crochet in each one of those. And then we're going to double crochet in the next three. Double crochet. So there's one. Here's two. And three. So now we have three chains left. We are going to half double crochet in each of those last three chains. So one, two, and three. Okay, so there's that drip. We are going to Sew that down when we come back around. Now we are going to work on round 31 of the bag. We are going to slip stitch in the next 10 stitches. So go to this next one here. Make sure your yarn is on this side. Yarn over, pull through, and through. So that's one. Next stitch, two. Here's three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oopsie, and ten. Awesome. Then we can chain 11, so yarn over, pull through, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11, and we are working on this next drip here. We're going to half double crochet in the second chain from the hook, so yarn over, go in the second chain, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. We're going to half double crochet in the next, so yarn over, go into the next chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Then we're going to single crochet into the next two chains, <laughs> single crochet, one and two. Then we're going to half double crochet in the next two, so yarn over for a half double crochet, there's one and the next one is two. Then we're going to double crochet in the last four chains. So double crochets here is one, here's two, here's 
three. And last one here is four double crochet. Okay, so you can lay this down here. That's our next drip. So this is what they're kind of looking like. Really interesting looking drips. So these are really random, but let's just continue on. I'll show you which ones, how I'm doing mine. So now we want to slip stitch in the next five stitches on round 31 here. So go in this next stitch, then yarn over, pull through and through. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, then we want to chain 14. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. We're going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook, single crochet in the next chain, half double crochet in the next chain. Then double crochet in the next five chains. So one, there's two, three, four, and five. Then we're going to half double crochet in the next four chains. So here's one, here's two, three, and four. And then there's one chain left. We're going to single crochet in there. Okay, and there's that drip. Awesome. Now I gotta. Turn the page on my pattern here. Let's go on to the next step right away. We are going to slip stitch in eight stitches on round 31 of this bag here. So go right here, go into the next uh, front loop there, yarn over, pull through and through. There's one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. Then we need to chain eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. We are going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook, half double crochet in the next, then double crochet in the next, and then double crochet in the one after that. Then we are going to half double crochet in the next, and half double crochet in the one after that. Then single crochet in the next, and then half double crochet in each of these last three chains. So one, here's two, and three. Okay, so there's our next drip there. Then we are going to slip stitch in the next six stitches here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And now we're going to make our next drip. We're going to chain 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, and 15. So we want to single crochet in the second chain from the hook, half double crochet in the next, 
half double crochet in the one after that, then double crochet in the next three chains. So one, two, and three. Then we are going to half double crochet in the next, then single crochet in the next chain. Oh yeah, and single crochet in the next chain after that. Then half double crochet in the next. Then double crochet in the next three chains. So one, here's two, and three. Oh, there's one chain left. I'm going to half double crochet in that last chain. Okay, then we're going to slip stitch in the next six stitches on row 31 of this bag here. So go in, yarn over, pull through and through. That's one. Next free stitch is two. Here's three. Here's four, five, and six. All right, now we're going to make another drip here. We're gonna chain eight. You can see here we're, we're almost done, actually. We just have this much to go. So we're just going to chain eight here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, and then we are going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook, half double crochet in the next, then, uh, let's see here, yep, double crochet in the next chain, then half double crochet in the next chain, then we are going to single crochet in each of the last three chains, so that's a smaller drip there. One, two, and three. Okay, then we're going to slip stitch in the next, let's see here, three stitches. So make sure your yarn is on this side. Going into the next stitch on round 31 here. One, two, and three. Okay, then we're going to chain 13. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. We are going to slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. Then we're going to single crochet in the next, then half double crochet in the next, single crochet in the next, half double crochet in the next, um, double crochet in each of the next two chains, one and two. There we go. Then we're going to half double crochet in the next, then single crochet in the next, and then there should be three chains left. We're going to half double crochet in each one of those. One, two, and three. Okay, and there's our next one there. Okay, I just want to make one more drip in between here. So I am going to slip stitch in one, two, three, four, five, in six stitches here. Make sure that yarn is on this side. Going up in here, six stitches on round 31. So one, two, 
three, four, here's five, and six. And then we're going to, let's chain 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We're going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook, half double crochet in the next, then double crochet in the next two chains, one and two. Then half double crochet in the next two chains, <laughs> one and two. Then single crochet in the next, then half double crochet in each of the rest of the chains, which should be three. So one, two, and three. All right, now we are going to slip stitch in the rest of the stitches until we get to the beginning here. Let me count how many that is. One, whoopsie. One, there we go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so there should be eight or nine. We're going to then go into the first stitch right here where we made our first beginning stitch and we're going to slip stitch in there. So yarn over and pull through and through. And now we're going to fasten this off. So chain one, we are going to fasten off with an extremely, extremely long tail because we are going to use that for sewing our drips down. And you can see here, I am cutting my yarn really super long because you're going to need to go down each drip and you want to have enough yarn. So then we're just going to continue to pull this all the way through where we just chained up one to fasten off. We're just gonna continue to pull that. If you wanted to, you could fasten off with a short tail and then use just an extra piece of yarn to uh, sew down your uh, drips of lava, <laughs> which you can definitely do that. But I just fastened off here just like that with a long tail, okay? So now what we want to do is just sew each of these down all the way around this piece. So we're going to grab the yarn needle, okay? Yarn our needle with that really long tail, okay? Come on. There we go. Okay, and then what we're going to do is start sewing. Okay, I'm not going to make you watch me do all the sewing, but just to get um, an idea of it, we're going to go in and out of these stitches. Okay, and now I'm in the drip itself here, and this is going to be a lot of pulling and a lot of sewing. I'm just going to continue to pull this. Okay. And now we have this first drip to go in all the way down. And what I'm going to do is go down this edge here and then come back up this edge here so that it all is stay it all stays down. Now, this I'm going to do a little fast for the camera, but you want to definitely take your time and make sure that you get it to your liking. But like I said though, it's going to be a lot of pulling and a lot of sewing. So try not to get your yarn too tangled up here. But I'm going to just go through just like this. 
in and out, okay? So, and then we're just gonna go down each drip and up each drip, and then we're gonna go along this row here to the next drip, and just go down and up, and then through to the next drip, down and then up, and just keep doing that all the way around, okay? So I'm just gonna sew these on. Like I said, I'm not gonna make you watch me do it all, um, but just, uh, just go down the drips and then come back up and just sew these on as well as you can. And then once I have all my drips all sewn down, and it looks good, I'll meet you up, we'll make the um, handle, we'll chain a handle for this bag, and then we can cinch it closed to make it actually look like a volcano. Alright, I'm just finishing up here, just sewing down these drips of lava. And then once you get back to the beginning here, Make sure everything is looking good and we can fasten this part off now so we want to come back to the beginning where this first um, if you have a straggler here um, awesome if not you can just tie some knots I'm gonna tie a knot to this beginning I don't know where the straggler came from actually <laughs> but it's there so I'm gonna tie a knot to it okay I'm gonna cut these both the same size here. Grab my yarn needle and sew in this end. Okay, all we have to do now is just kind of make like a handle kind of thing um, to weave through this so that it doesn't look like a paint bucket and actually will look like a volcano. <laughs> so I'm just gonna sew in these ends real quick to the inside the bag just like this and then underneath some stitching just like that just make sure the end is hidden completely and all your loose ends are sewn in stretch it out make sure it looks good cut any extra okay so this is what it should look like okay like I said though it kind of looks like a paint bucket dripping right now but what we're going to do is make a chain and cinch this closed so that it looks like a volcano so what we need to do is grab some red yarn or whatever color you want to make your strap or your handle and then make a slip knot so put your short end over your long end fold this down and then pull that long end through and then grab a good crochet hook. We're going to use the same H size hook. You can use a bigger or smaller hook if you want to. And now what we're going to do is chain an amount. I'm going to chain 100 exactly. You can chain less or more depending on how big you want your handle to be, but we're just going to yarn over and pull through. That's one. Yarn over, pull through. Two, three, four, five, six. I won't make you obviously watch me do all 100 chains. So I'm just going to chain 100. Once I have 100 chains, um, I might do a little more or less depending on how big I want my handle to be. I'll meet you up and we'll weave this through the bag and finish this piece off. All right, once you chain 100, I, I think it's pretty, I'm um, satisfied with the size here. I'm gonna pull this uh, yarn through here, and then we're gonna go back to the beginning and grab that straggler that we had when we made our slip knot, and we're going to grab our yarn needle and yarn our needle with that little straggler. I like a little piece of yarn on my needle, how weird. So try to get that through your yarn needle. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna grab a different yarn needle, sorry guys. There we go, a bigger one. All right, so yarn your needle with that little straggler. Grab your bag. Okay, so we're going to leave this side uh, with that loop on there. It's still attached to the ball of yarn, okay? We're going to find out any which uh, section here. I'm just going to go through this bottom. So you can see here, this is row 32. 
our slip stitch row is row 31 here, okay, of the bag. We're going to go through row 32 here. So we're just going to weave it in and out, um, basically between the stitches. Okay, I'm going to skip like three stitches and then come through. Three or four stitches, I guess. And then we're just going to bring that chain. That chain is going to be woven through. Okay. And we're going to kind of pull it until we get to the end right there. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there. And then we're just going to weave this in and out. So I'm just going to skip one stitch and then four stitches. Okay, then one stitch and then four stitches. And really you could just eyeball it. But I'm, I'm doing it lower, more like on row 32, just so that it gives more of a, vol a volcano look to it when I finish weaving this through. And like I said though earlier, you can chain more or less. And if you want to weave this through and then eyeball it at that point and see if you uh, like uh, how big this handle is going to be. There we go. Okay, almost done here. And through here. It does not have to be perfect, nobody's going to really see that. And I'm going a little faster for the camera, obviously. Okay, coming back around. All right, so when you come back around now, what we're going to do is come out here, just like that, okay? Then what we're going to do is take our hook back in that loop there, okay? Bring it to the first chain right here on this piece, and we're going to go into the very first chain Okay, right there, go in, and then we're going to slip stitch to that, so yarn over and pull that through, oh my goodness, hang on, go in, there we go, yarn over, pull through that, and pull through that loop on your hook, just like that, and then we're going to fasten, fasten off, so chain one, cut your yarn, and then put, continue to pull that through and pull tight. And we have two stragglers here. I'm going to tie those in a knot as well, just to reinforce this. Okay, then I'm going to take these two strands. I'm going to cut them the same size so that that is easier. Grab that yarn needle, take those two strands, and then weave them into this chain of this handle here. Just weave them in and out of the chain of the handle like that and then we're going to go backwards because this actually may um, you know kind of poke out a little bit so we're going to actually go back through those chains just like that. That way it's nice and secure stretch it out, cut any little bit of extra, careful with those scissors, and then we're going to put that part on the inside of the bag so that nobody can really see that. Then we're going to take the ending, the edges of our bag here, and pull out the straps. Let me see here, there it is, on this end here, and this opposite end, you can see it right there, ok, 
Okay. So we're going to pull those out. Of where you want your handles to be. So I want mine on each end. Make sure they're even. Pull them tight. And there it is. A nice volcano bag. <laughs> and it looks actually like a volcano now that we cinched the top. Just like that. You can play around with the handle however long you wanted it to be, you know, where you want it to be on the sides. And there's how it looks. This dripping hot liquid magma. <laughs> how cool is that? Thank you so much for watching and learning how to make this volcano bag, this real wristlet purse kind of thing, be, you know, like really weird about it and you can you know put random stuff inside use these as gift bags use this as a purse use it as a satchel for whatever you want to carry in it let me know what you're carrying in your satchels in your volcano bags leave a comment to this post if you learned something make sure you thumbs up this video subscribe to my channel here on youtube and i'll see you next time <laughs> enjoy your bags and happy hugging